HBCUGameDay.com. I'm Tali Carr, along with Stephen J. Gaither, who's on the big board again this week. And Stephen, man, we're getting down to the end of the year. Tournament is about to start, and we finally got a look at who is all-conference in the CIAA and the player of the year, the defensive player of the year. So, Stephen, let's jump right into it, and we'll give a little commentary as we go here. Coming in, all CIAA, Wykeven Baysmore from Winston-Salem State. That's a no-brainer. Hakeem Jackson from Livingstone. Uh, Livingstone actually had three players here. We have Daryl Ward from Elizabeth City. Uh, not a good year for the team, but a good year for him. Uh, Stedman Lemon. He's no lemon. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> from Johnson C. Smith. That was really bad. Eric Mayo from Livingstone. Uh, Tyrese Little from Virginia State. Dante Hopper. Harper. He had a, I was actually surprised by that one a little bit, but... He deserves to be up there. Cameron Knox from Bowie State. Eric DuBois from Livingstone. Again, he's the third uh, player for the Blue Bears. Raheem Jolive, he puts up a lot of points along with Cameron Knox. The top two scorers in the league from St. Aug. Lamar Curse from Virginia State. And Kyrie Bethel from Chawan. Your CIAA Player of the Year is Cameron Knox. And Tyrese Little is the Defensive Player of the Year. So let's start at CIAA Player of the Year. Cameron Knox. Uh, he leads the league in scoring, so that's an easy choice there. But when you look at it, uh, Stephen, who else could have been a selection as player of the year and maybe people wouldn't have been shocked by that? Well, there were a lot of, a lot of great candidates this year. There wasn't really one guy that stood out this year, um, but one, one that uh, definitely had, a, uh, they definitely had a, uh, an argument would have been uh, Waukegan Baysmore from Winston-Salem State. Uh, he scores, he rebounds, he blocks shots. Uh, plays defense tough, and he's just an all-around player and a guy that um, coaches know is going to be a problem for them in a lot of ways. So um, he's a four-time All-CIAA player. That's kind of a rare thing. Um, hasn't been done a lot. Uh, and so, you know, he, you definitely feel like he has an argument. Maybe for him, you know, stats weren't as great because there were a lot of guys on his team that could score and, uh, and, and maybe that allowed him to focus on different areas. So um, a great, you know, you know, Cameron Knox is a great point guard. Uh, he's uh, been a CIAA champion before uh, with Bowie back in 2013, and uh, he's looking to lead those guys again. So I'm sure he's going to be out to prove that he deserves it, and I'm sure there'll be some guys that feel like they, uh, you know, are going to prove that they deserve it as well. So, you know, one thing I look at, Stephen, when you lead the league in scoring, uh, that that needs to be honored, and, and and that's definitely the case in Cameron Knox. I, I would say, though, for Waikiven, he maybe makes an impact in one more category. If you look where he is in rebounds, he leads the league there. Uh, I think if I look down at the stats here, he's fifth in blocks, and, and he's very efficient uh, with his field goal percentage. He is at 50% from the floor. So, you know, we could argue about this thing, and that's the great thing about sports. There's always debate, but uh, you cannot argue that he's had a great career at Winston-Salem State uh, for his four years. Right, definitely has. Um, you know, he's uh, definitely been a catalyst for those guys, and he's going to be missed next year for him. All right, uh, but Cameron Knox, though, he's had a great year, and and Bowie State is going to be a team uh, that people are going to have to reckon with, uh, one of the top two teams in the Northern Division. All right, this is something I know you're pretty excited about, and that's the Rookie of the Year in the CIAA. Right. I, I don't know if there's right. a bigger fan of Quincy January than, than you, Stephen Jay. You, you've fallen in love with those spectacular dunks that he's given us this year. Uh, but Terrell Leach from Winston-Salem State, and, and let's put this disclaimer out there that we're not Winston-Salem State homers, although both you and I have a degree from Winston-Salem State. But Terrell Leach, uh, he's had a, a great year, but maybe a little up and down and maybe not as consistent uh, from game to game uh, as January. What do you think? Right, yeah, I mean, I think you have to look at it um... – and uh, down, both both guys have had their moments. You know, you had Leach, uh, where he just went off against Fayetteville State and uh, scored 27 points and really keyed those guys to a win. He had 16 points the other night against Jasper C. Smith, hit some big three pointers for Winston Salem State to put them in first place in the division heading into the last game of the season. But uh, yeah, you I mean Quincy January every night? I mean, the guy's going to give you between you know the guy's going to give you 10 to 15 points. He's going to give you. You know, anywhere from six to six to eight, nine rebounds, um, and uh, he's just a guy that you have to account for all the time. I mean, they don't run a lot of plays for the guy. He still averages double figures. He just finds a way to get to the ball. And, and you like you talk about those dunks. You know, I nicknamed him the uh, ATLian 
Uh, and uh, I think he hasn't done anything to uh, dissuade that nickname. So um, Leach, you know, like I said, he's having great moments. Uh, but again, I think the same thing with Baysmore. There are a lot of guys on that Winston-Salem State team that can score the ball. And uh, both of those guys are going to be good for years to come. And if we keep both of those guys in the CIAA for four years, then it's going to be pretty exciting to see them in a couple of years uh, battling it out for player of the year honors and, and things like that. Well, definitely an inside-outside combination, although they don't obviously play on the same team. But January gets it done uh, down in the paint. He's shooting, what, 65% or something like that from the field. Uh, and Leach is definitely a guy. He can finish above the rim, but he really makes a killing in a lot of those games uh, from behind the arc. So no complaints, just a little bit of debate about player of the year and rookie of the year in all CIAA selections. Uh, Larry Richardson from Shaw, sixth leading scorer in the conference. No all CIAA selection for him. Surprised by that, Stephen? Man, it's, uh, I mean, like I say, I think that this year, um, there's just, there, there aren't that many players that are so much above everyone else that, you know, sometimes a guy like him is going to get lost in the shuffle. I mean, he's had a really good year, um, you know, one of our candidates for dunk of the year um, and, you know, just had some solid games, but Shaw just hasn't been able to, to take care of business down the stretch. So, you know, it might be against a guy, you know, it, maybe he could have went in place of one of those Livingstone guys, but Livingstone's had a better year. You know, anytime that you're the winner, you're generally going to get those type of accolades that maybe the other teams aren't getting. So, uh, you know, tough luck for Larry Richardson, but, you know, tournament's always there. Tournament's always time to make a name for yourself. Um, there's a couple other guys that probably um, previous all CIAA uh, people who didn't get in, and that is uh, that would be Marquez Jones of Winston Salem State, and also Emilio Parks uh, from Johnson C Smith. Both those guys, talented offensive players. Um, John Jones probably uh, down the stretch, he's been a key guy for Winston Salem State. Early in the year, he wasn't always getting the minutes, uh, and there's a lot of guys that are scoring, so that kind of took away from him his year. But he's had a good year down the stretch for them, and he's going to be big. And then also Emilio Parks. Um, he didn't get in either. Either He missed a significant portion of the season, but uh, he put up 26 against WSSU. He had a great game against Fayetteville State. And uh, if Johnson C. Smith is going to make a run, it's going to be because Emilio Parks and Stedman Lemon are uh, out there hitting. And I don't know that there's a better combination inside and out right now than those two. All right, so a lot to think about. A lot of top-heavy teams, uh, just deep teams, a lot of parity in the league. It's been quite an interesting regular season. And I don't have any idea that things will be disappointing at all as we get to the tournament next week. Uh, on an editorial note, Stephen J., I have to admit I'm a little scruffy. I don't know what's going on with my style. Uh, I think I'm going for the poor man's Eric Benet, but it's just a, a work in progress. And, and maybe one day I can be as dapper as you. But uh, right now, you're first team, and, and I'm honorable mention in that category, Stephen J. You know, uh, you know, we still everybody's still running in the shape for a tournament time, so you still got a little bit of time between now and next week. All right, I'll try to work it out and make a decision on about what I'm doing about all of this right here. All right, for Stephen J. Gaither, I'm Tali Carr. A lot of fun. We're looking forward to the tournament. Thanks for watching us at HBCUGameDay.com. We'll be talking to you soon.